Hey guys and welcome back to my channel. Thank you for joining me for another video. Today we're going to be talking about what I wasted this week but also kind of trying to measure my carbon footprint for the week. Now it's not going to be extensive and it's all based on estimates but I thought it'd be really interesting to see what I, how I measured it and what I measured and whether I was surprised by how much carbon I feel like I've estimated that I could have produced and yeah I thought it'd just make it a bit more interesting than my last what I wasted this week showing like the physical trash that I made but also the unknown kind of resources and stuff. So grab a cup of tea and let's get straight into the video. Okay so just to put it out there first to measure my carbon footprint i basically use this book how bad are bananas everyone's been raving about it it's called the carbon footprint of everything but there is a little disclaimer at the beginning that i think is important to note because i'm obviously not a scientist or a climatologist or anything like that so i thought i would read this out because i thought it was really good as well carbon footprint is a lovely phrase that is horribly abused i want to make my definition clear at the outset Throughout this book, I'm using the word footprint as a metaphor for the total impact that something has. And I'm using the word carbon as shorthand for all the different global warming greenhouse gases. So I'm using the term carbon footprint as shorthand to mean the best estimate that we can get of the full climate change impact of something. That something could be anything, an activity, an item, a lifestyle, a company, a country, or even the whole world. So I think that's a good thing because when I say carbon footprint, obviously take it with a pinch of salt. I'm using it in the way that they're using it. It's a best estimate and it's obviously not going to be completely inclusive of everything that I've used, but let's just get into it, shall we? So starting with physical waste. I didn't waste very much this week in terms of physical waste, which is why I thought let's look at the stuff that you don't see, but that I have still wasted. But I'm going to start with the physical trash and show you what it is. So one of the first things is a parking permit because I I went to go and visit Maddie and Alex when Aubrey from the Minimal Millennials was in town and we drove to Brighton. Maddie gave us one of these so that we could park on her road. Now you might think that this is recyclable but it's actually I can already tell just by feeling it that it's lined with some kind of plastic. If you want to know more about plastics then I've just written a whole article about the different types of plastics and UK recycling information on the low impact movement so I'll put that in the description down below. But I can tell that I can try and pull these apart and split it and then I'll be able to recycle one half but not the other because some types of plastic are really not widely recycled so that's the problem with this and that's why even though it's cardboard it is a hazard in terms of recycling because it's a mixed recycling so i can try my best to split them in half and yeah but this compared to the miles that i drove in a car to get to brighton and back is going to completely outweigh this tiny piece of paper so that'll be fun to get to that the next thing is this is just packaging from a new chocolate bar from Loving Earth that we tried when we were in Brighton. And that is one of the biggest ways that I waste. When I find new stuff that's vegan or plant-based, I get a little overexcited and I want to try it. This says that the whole packaging is compostable and it's made from vegetable inks on board that's 97% post-consumer recycled fiber. You know, that doesn't take into consideration where the nuts came from, where the coconut came from, or where the cocoa powder came from. All of those three materials are on reflection quite unsustainable. So that's quite a lesson to learn. Sometimes when you are buying things, you completely forget to look at the ingredients and really consider actually, is this really worth those 10 minutes of enjoyment? And it wasn't because this was not delicious. <laughs> I'm just gonna put it out there. But at least I can recycle this and kind of learn from this and realize that, you know, it's not just about the packaging, it's the ingredients that goes into it and the resources and how far did this travel to come to get here? I mean, it's made in Australia, even though they might have some kind of warehouse in the UK. Now it's actually kind of sad looking at it properly whilst on camera, because you can sort of realize that like this was really Really quite a very unsustainable choice so just gonna put that back then you have the inside wrapper which to me I thought was plastic which was really kind of I guess annoying because that is made of cardboard but then realizing actually obviously there's gonna be plastic inside but this says that it's completely home compostable so it doesn't just say it's compostable it says that it's home compostable now I need to look into this a little bit more but it's interesting that they use the term home before it because then it does imply that it doesn't need like 50 degree heat and a kind of industrial composter to actually break this down I am gonna put it in a compost heap and I'm going to 
basically to keep an eye on it. And I'm gonna come back to this video in a year's time and I'm gonna tell you whether this is actually composted or not. I don't think that enough people have done these kind of experiments with stuff that says like it's home compostable. So we will see whether that is actually the case. Otherwise, that's annoying. That's another piece of waste. It's tiny, but it still has a huge impact. The next thing is a little paper napkin, which I didn't even use, so it was a complete waste. Uh, when again, when I was in Brighton with Maddie and Alex and Aubrey, we got an ice cream and I chose to have a cone so I didn't have to waste a pot but or a plastic spoon, but they still gave me this. But luckily it's recyclable or you can put this. I don't know if you can put this on your compost heap because it's coloured, but I will find out. At least it's paper. But still, it's still trash and it still had resources that went into this to create it in the first place. And the last thing of physical trash that I created this week is a brown paper bag. Now, I get an odd box each week because it's wonky and wonderful vegetables and they come in a cardboard box that they reuse so I don't even have to recycle that. And all of the vegetables were unpackaged except for some spinach which came in a brown paper bag. Now, on the outset, looking at a brown paper bag, you're like, well, I can actually put this in my compost heap and I can actually recycle this, but also the hidden resources, again, that went into creating this for it to be used once and then for me to just compost it is, you know, quite dramatic. And I do, I should have looked that up. Next time I will look up things like that and be a bit more in depth. But this, this uh, video is a bit of an experiment trying out my carbon footprint. So the problem also with this is that I was going to reuse it, but then, I poked a hole in it by accident because of my stupid long nails. This is why I don't usually have long nails, but whatever. So yeah, that is the end of my physical waste. And from looking at that, you can obviously see the patterns in which I waste and when I kind of don't waste. So I obviously waste when I am with other people and we are trying new things and we are exploring new places and seeing that there are new options for me. As a vegan and plant-based eater, I obviously don't eat uh, the old kind of candy bars and stuff like that. And also trying to live a low impact lifestyle, I try not to eat stuff that's wrapped in packaging anyway. But then when I saw it, I just thought, oh, it's in, it's in cardboard and on the back it said it was a compostable. I was like, that's amazing. And then obviously completely forgot to look at the resources that would go into growing the food that is in it and also how I was going to go about considering any of those transportation costs and stuff like that. So I think it's really good about looking at your waste each week or even each month and looking at your own habits and really assessing kind of the importance of the value on each item that you've wasted. So how worth it was it for me to buy that? It wasn't worth it because it wasn't very good. So that is a massive lesson that I will learn and I'll take that into consideration the next time. Anyway, before this video gets really long, let's move on to my carbon footprint. So, obviously, again, this is not extensive, but this is something that I looked at some of the main things that I wasted and kind of measured how many grams and then how many grams or kilograms of carbon CO2 that ended up being according to this book. And also, there's a reason why I stopped maths after A-level, because I'm not good at it. So uh, let's just move on. Okay, so things like cycling, emails, having a cup of coffee, watching an hour of TV, having one pint of beer, a bowl of porridge, shower, reading a paper book, using my mobile phone, using a computer and sending text messages. Those were the things that I decided to kind of focus on. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm using lights and obviously driving to Brighton and back because these are the things that I do every single day, apart from the pint of beer, but I thought it'd be interesting to show you how much that was. And trying to fully understand how much we waste we don't quite realize because obviously waste that we don't see also has a dramatic effect on the planet and we focus quite a lot on physical waste because it's something tangible and something that we can recognize and fix easily if you know what I mean but I just think for me I, I unwittingly waste because I don't see the actual impact right in front of me. So for lights, leaving the lights on and turning them off, and I'm such a stickler for this, especially after reading this book. But I thought I would just kind of like, I, it's, it's too hard to work out the, you know, how many hours a day my lights are on as opposed to off type thing or in the evening. So I'm just gonna say that I wasted about 80, oh, 
wasted. I used about 87 grams worth of CO2 in light emissions during the week. Fuel, so I drove once from London to Brighton and back. And I never drive when I'm in London because I don't need to because I've got my bike. And to be, to be honest, after doing this, I didn't think it would be that bad to use the car maybe once or twice a month. But seeing how much that this costs, I will probably start getting the train from now on. I always get the train to like much further places. Like I really loved it when I went to Totnes to film a wedding. I it tells you when you buy your train tickets how much CO2 that you're saving by getting the train, which I think is so cool. But yeah, I really just wanted to be honest with you and let you know that I did drive to Brighton and back so that you could get a better understanding of how much fuel and CO2 that costs. So it's about 120 miles from where I live. So it's about 120 miles from where I live to Brighton and back. So that's about 41.2 kilograms of CO2. That's a lot. If I work that out right, that's a lot. Okay, so for cycling, I cycle obviously around London, but this week I've been busy working from home. So I've only really cycled to and from the gym about three times, and it's about a mile and a half there and a mile and a half back. So it's like about nine miles this week, and it's about 65 grams of carbon a mile. And that is very much dependent on what you're eating, what fuels your body, how much you weigh, how fast you're going, etc. So I chose the one that was most relevant to me and kind of it basically is insinuated if you eat fruits and you were fueled by fuse and then you got on your bike this is how much it would weigh so i used about 585 grams of carbon by cycling to and from which as you can see is nothing compared to i mean obviously nine miles is nothing compared to 120 miles but anyway Okay, emails. I sent probably around 100 emails this week, again, another estimate, and that used about 400 grams of carbon. Tea and coffee. I estimated that I drunk about 14 cups of coffee or tea. So I drink about two cups a day, one coffee, one tea. So throughout the week that ends up about 14. So that was about 294 grams of carbon used to create that. And I really suggest that you read this book if you're kind of not sure how I'm working this out because I will also show some pictures and stuff over all the different pages so you can kind of see. But this is, again, all estimates. And then it's funny because when me and Aubrey, we met up because we did the collab video last week and we had a cup of coffee and we were talking about the videos and how to like plan for it and stuff. And I had a latte, which was with oat milk. And it says that for a large latte, it's 340 grams of carbon. So that's more than the 40 cups of black coffee and tea that I had during the week so that really really made me think a lot about whether I should be having you know I know that these things are small compared to like the big picture things like the car but it does still get you to thinking about what you should and shouldn't be choosing okay one hour of TV so for one hour of TV it says that it's 76 grams of carbon and I've really got into Grey's Anatomy recently so i watched about 12 episodes this week and that ended up being 912 grams of carbon and that does not take into consideration all the youtube that i've been watching this week as well so remember that when i'm telling you these that this doesn't include absolutely everything i had one pint of beer i me and my friend went to a vietnamese restaurant last week because i hadn't seen her in ages and we wanted to go out and try something new and i had a beer that had been imported from vietnam probably not the best on reflection because I looked at the differences and it was 900 grams for my imported bottle of beer. But if you've got a local pint of draft beer, I just want to let you know because I'm actually really surprised by this. So if you've got a locally brewed cast ale at the pub, it would have only been 300 grams. So one third of what my bottled beer which was from a shop or from a restaurant that's extensively transported. So again, it's not just what you're drinking it in, but it's also where it's coming from. And the fact that the bottle was obviously transported across the world. Oh. This is why it's important to do this, because you can realize the kind of things that, the choices that you're making and the mistakes that you're making and find a way to move on. Okay, also porridge. A bowl of porridge, I had about seven because I have one every single morning and that equated to about 574 grams. And that is just oats with water. I never put any milk in it or anything like that because I don't feel like I need to. And so that's kind of a standard bowl of porridge. It will obviously be more if you have fruit or anything in it as well or nuts or seeds or whatever. A shower, I had seven showers this week and that was 3.5 kilograms of CO2. So again, more. I read one paper book this week and that is one kilogram 
of CO2. Mobile phone. I was surprised at how little this was because I used it for approximately three hours a day for seven days and that was about 719 grams of carbon. And then using my computer, which is about 63 grams per hour and I use it about 10 hours a day for five days a week, which I know is a lot, but I work a lot at the moment. And two hours at the weekend each day. So that equated to about 3.4 kilograms of CO2 for the week. And then text messages. I worked out that I send about 1400 a week. Rough estimate, but I do send a lot of messages. And per message it's like 0.014 grams. So for the week it was about 19.4 grams. So that wasn't, that wasn't too much. That was okay. But to kind of put this into perspective, because I know that saying all these numbers doesn't mean anything unless I have something to compare it to. So for example, this is, and this is, this is again reinforces why I'm always saying that you should buy a second hand, not just because of the waste that goes into it, but also the CO2 that's kind of created by it. It says, even before turning on a new iMac, it has the same footprint as flying from Glasgow to Madrid and back. So I know a lot of people talk about how unsustainable flying is, but if you also look at everything that you use in your day-to-day -day life, it's really important that you look at the big picture stuff too. So yes, I fully agree that flying is unsustainable, but it's also interesting to compare it. So if you bought a new computer, that is the equivalent of a short haul flight from Madrid to Glasgow and back. So it's, it's interesting to put those things into perspective. And if you look at my totals, so without the drive to and from Brighton, I used about 12.73 kilograms of CO2 for the week. But including the drive, it was about 53.93 kilograms for the week. So I dramatically increased my waste of resources that were not physical dramatically by using something that was a big carbon footprint waster. And whew, it just really makes you think about the things that you do a lot more and where your food comes from. And this is why I'm always talking about eating local and seasonal food because your food has a massive impact on like where it comes from, how far it flies from. And also again, just like this doesn't include everything. Like it was too hard for me to work out kind of all the food that I'm eating as well. So that's just, that's like the bare minimum of the stuff that I do. I just chose the biggest things that I thought were big wasters. Some of the things that you really need to think about are just trying to buy secondhand as much as possible. Weighing up how big this or that is. I know I mentioned drinking black coffee was gonna be better than drinking a latte, for example, but in the grand scheme of things, that's nothing compared to choosing to get the train over flying and things like that. And I do still fly because my boyfriend lives in America, but at the same time, I'm trying my hardest to just travel less and to when I do travel try and get the train or try and get the bus or something that's less environmentally harmful. So looking at other things like don't buy a new computer, buy a second hand computer and stuff like that which are big carbon. <sighs> also it talks about what are carbon minuses and carbon neutral things. So if you spent one pound for example but you spent one pound on solar panels or if you spent one pound on a charity that directly helps environmental stuff that's like carbon minus because you are doing something that offsets other waste if you know what i mean anyway i found this really interesting to do and i'm going to continue looking into it more and trying to learn more about like climatology and understanding how climate change really works and how the things that we do really affect it but again on a personal level it was really interesting to figure out yeah anyway i hope you enjoyed it i know it's quite a long video so i hope some of you got through to the end but let me know what you thought about it in the comment section below and if you want to me to do this kind of stuff again and yeah thank you so much for watching i will see you guys very very, very soon bye